The Entrepreneur's Library, episode 249. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Welcome back to the EL. Today we have Alan Fishman, author of Strategic Business Leadership. Welcome, Alan, and thank you for joining us on the Entrepreneur's Library. I'm looking forward to this, and I'm so pleased that you invited me. Before we take a deep dive into your book, Strategic Business Leadership, will you take just a moment to introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you personally. Well, I'm an entrepreneur, so I guess this is a good fit for the Entrepreneur's Library. Perfect. <laughs> uh, the, the company that uh, I have right now, it's not the first company I farmed. Um, I, I had a company I was part owner of that... Uh, wound up electronics company that went public uh, with NASDAQ, uh, retired for a few years, and then I started the alternative board, TAB. And TAB is a, a membership organization for business owners of closely held businesses, family businesses, uh, that now operates in 11 countries. It's the world largest provider of peer advisory board services and coaching services for business owners. The uh, book, Strategic Business Leadership, has developed as a result of experiences that have taken place in helping our TAB uh, business owner members around the world. So, Alan, first off, thank you for sharing that. I love to, to hear the, the credibility before we actually dive into a book. And now let's do just that. Let's jump right into the book, uh, Strategic Business Leadership, The Proven Formula for Greater Company Success. Uh, which originally came out in 2011. And uh, Alan, we're, go we're going to move quickly. But our whole goal here today is to cover those top questions that the, the listener, the future reader would like to get answered before buying and diving into your book. And the first one is, what was the inspiration behind writing Strategic Business Leadership? Well, well we found out very early in the game with TAB. And TAB, I started TAB in 1990. And I had a background that was with bigger businesses than uh, most size businesses for privately owned companies. And with a big business, you know, as a public company, uh, we were able to spend a lot of time with our managers focused very, very intensely on strategic planning. That's not a reality for privately owned businesses unless they get very big. So, what I did many years ago, around 25 years ago, is adapt the key elements of strategic planning, added on the realities and the elements involved that make privately owned businesses different from anything else out there, recognizing entrepreneurs are not driven the same way as somebody who's a professional manager of a, of a public company, and try to come up with something that through bite sizes could be digestible by a privately owned business. One that's likely to work because it's put in piece by piece by piece by piece. So Alan, this is maybe one of the most important questions because it's going to help differentiate your book from the millions of others out there. So what makes your book different from others regarding the same or similar topic? Well, I'll just give you um, a couple of quickies. Uh, in response. Number one, uh, look at the strategic planning books that are out there. There's many really very well done professional planning. I actually have one myself uh, called Stratpro that's just on strategic planning. But they don't start where we start. With strategic business leadership, we first focus on the vision that long-term dreams the entrepreneur has. Everything else works off of and must tie into what are the dreams of the entrepreneur? Those dreams may not be to have the most profitable business. The dreams may be to have something that allows them to have a certain lifestyle, allows them to have a certain prominence, allows them to have something that might involve their children. So we don't start with what's the vision of the company. We start with what's the personal vision of the business owner? That's just one point. Secondly, every strategic planning book out there, and as I said, there are many, focuses on get together, you start off, you kick it off with a oh, couple of day retreat. 
and you intensely get your entire management team to get involved in everything from from top to bottom, looking at your company and developing the plans, the strategies, right down to the action plan, and then intense amount of time involved in working the details out, the tactics, and a constant and an intense amount of time involved, week in and week out, if not month in, month out, to make it happen. But typically, every week there's involvement with these plans. But that doesn't work with most privately owned businesses. First of all, most of them don't have the time availability to just drop everything, develop four or five major plans, and, and focus on them at a, such a strategically high level. So what I've done with uh, SBL, which is another major, major differentiator, is this has worked off a coaching process that is implemented over a period of time. Our facilitator coaches work with our members with the same time factor that's in the book for people who are not members of TAB because they can do these same things on their own we think it's better if they have someone helping them, but they certainly can implement these. But it's done month in, month out. We have a, co you know, SBL is a coaching process. And for 12 months, every single month, we focus on one piece of this, and then it circles around. So for example, we'll start off with the personal vision, and we go into the point of having to have a personal vision statement that is developed with less, no more than 100 words. So it has to be succinct. Only one that is done, and that statement, by the way, is not just what may affect the business, but what does that business owner want his or her life to be like as it involves working in the business, planning for exit strategy, uh, material factors, uh, working with co-owners, I mean, there's so many factors that go involved into a personal vision that aren't just about what that business is going to look like. What, what is the business owner going to be wanting to do in that business five to 10 years from now? In a different month, we start going into another factor that deals with the, the vision of the company, the company vision. Then we, at another month, we look at an in-depth study uh, what we call looking in the company mirror. And we look at what many people refer to as the SWAT. What are the company's strengths? What are the company's weaknesses? The company's opportunities and threats? Because we, until we have that information, we don't even try to identify the critical success factors for making the company successful. At a different month, so we're not trying to get this all into the company overnight. We identify and show you how to identify with questions. The book is full of examples and questions. And we try to look at what are the critical success factors that if they don't happen, you won't achieve the vision you have for your company. Only after we do that, and we again at a later month, so this is a, this is a full year long process, do we try to get involved with company plans? And when we talk about that, we're talking about finding a goal, our goals, that lead to succeeding with the critical success factor. What do you need? Another month. We talk through exercises and questions, what strategies do you need? And I should mention that one of the other things that's unusual about the book is that I've done this based upon three different size company case studies. So as we go through every one of these factors of such as uh, goals, we have one that's tied in with a larger company. They're all entrepreneur, a large one. We have one that's a company that's in the, the million to $500 million level. And we have one that's below a million dollars in revenue because how they do their planning differs greatly. Even the amount of plans they have differ greatly. With a very small company, we recommend they have one plan, period. Find the most driving critical success factor you have, develop a plan to handle that. At another month, we go and start showing how do you make it happen? How do you take the plan that you've developed and 
work with that plan so that you've got the actions, the accountability, the tactics to make it succeed. And then we look at how do you change course? Because one thing you and I know is that to succeed as an entrepreneur, you have to have a culture of change. You must be able to embrace change because things never stay the same and you're always adapting. So none of this is locked in stone. Even going back and reviewing the personal vision when you go through. Uh, I had a member who had a heart attack. Actually, he had two. His personal vision changed very significantly. His company vision changed significantly. Things take place with competition that may not have existed in the past. It affects your plans. It affects what's your, your critical success factor. So I hope this gives you kind of an overview of the, the elements we have. And the way that we recommend doing it in the book is through exercises with questions. On the personal vision, they're very, every one of the factors have very specific questions that you answer to help you develop your statements, to help you develop your plans, to help you develop the accountability you need to make your plans happen. Alan, you did a phenomenal job of giving us a, a recap. And now I'm going to ask you to take it even a step further in this next question. And that's, you know, if the reader can only take away one concept, principle or action item, out of your entire book, everything you just discussed with us, what would you personally want that to be? Well, if we were going to look at one concept, I would say for an entrepreneur, take the time to develop a written personal vision statement. Everything you do in the business should lead towards attaining that. And what we find is that with our members, and we've had, by the way, tens of thousands of people go through the strategic business leadership process. It is rare, if ever, that we will have a business owner come in as a member who has already taken the time to create a personal written vision statement. So I would say, no matter what else you do, Take the time to read that chapter and do a personal vision statement. Know where your resources should be directed and your time should be directed. That's awesome. That is really good. And and, and uh, you said some quote worthy things so far in this interview, and that leads into our next question, which is, do you have a favorite quote from the book? And we take a second to explain what it means to you. Sure. Um, I would say, and I'm going to go to, to vision again, that the unique vision an individual business owner has may not include maximizing profits our potential selling price. And this is something a lot of people just don't get because they don't understand the mind of an entrepreneur. These desires may involve such things as the family benefits, image in the community, flexibility or time for, away from the office. So many things that are just not profit oriented. See, SBL connects the, that owner, owners wants for the business to bring his or her personal life and, and helps make these things happen, even if company success for the business owner means something other than maximizing profits. SBL will help you maximize profits if that's what you're looking for. It all goes back to the personal vision of the company owner. That's absolutely huge. And Alan, we're going to put that in the show notes at the elpodcast.com so people can go back and reflect on that further. Uh, we're going to step away from your book for just a moment now, and we're going to ask you for not any book recommendation, but we're asking you for the book recommendation. So a book that you read that uh, had a huge impact on your life, one that maybe created a lifestyle or a paradigm shift. Uh, do you have a book like that that you could suggest to the audience? There's a book that I have that I can't say created a paradigm shift. I think what it did was support and make me feel more confident of a basic belief system I have that you succeed with people, not in spite of people. Too many entrepreneurs have this view that it's them and they're succeeding in spite of the failing of others. The reason why I was able with my partner to take a company from <laughs> such a tiny company to, to doing a pretty large volume and becoming a public company is because I developed a, a wonderful group of people. Uh, it's all about developing the right people who are very capable and who are self-accountable and 
you enjoy working with. I've been blessed over the years with being able to work with a lot of good people. And uh, this book, uh, uh, which is written by David Novak, I don't think, as far as I know, is not a bestseller. Uh, you may not have heard of it. It's called, uh, he's the CEO of Young Brands. And it's called Taking People With You, The Only Way to Make Big Things Happen. And I just totally believe in it. So sometimes just hearing someone or reading from what someone else has written, all things that support how you view make you even feel stronger in your belief. And that's what that book did. So I, 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 uh, I recommend it. <laughs> that's excellent, Alan. I don't think we've had it recommended before in almost you know 250 episodes. So thank you for, for mentioning it and giving us a, a great recap of, of it as well. But so Alan, before we depart, can you recommend the best way for our listeners to, to not only get more information on you, also get more information on uh, your membership, also get more information on your book? Well, as far as uh, membership, it's thealternativeboard.com. And I, I would uh, recommend that they go to our website and they'll learn more about uh, the services we can provide. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, they'll learn a little more about SBL. And as far as the book, the book, can be purchased at Amazon.com. And uh, more information uh, on strategic business leadership, as I said, could be found at www.thealternativeboard.com. And I know the Alternative Board's also on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Alternative Board. It's on LinkedIn, it's in Google Plus and Twitter. So those are a lot of sources. <laughs> Excellent. No, that's fantastic. They'll be in the show notes. I, 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 you know, 75, 85% of the people listening right now are out working out and running and doing something active, listening maybe on a mobile device. So we put all this in the show notes. So they can go back and reflect on it when they have the time. But to Alan, more than anything, I want to thank you for coming on and sharing your book with us today. Well, I appreciate the invitation. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks again for listening in today. If you'd like more information on Alan or his book, Strategic Business Leadership, Check out the show notes at the elpodcast.com. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the elpodcast.com, where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.